as you can tell, Jeff is not here today. He is not feeling well, so let's keep him in our prayers that he heals quickly and is back tomorrow and good to go. But anyway, we have had to call in the, the skeleton crew this morning. I'm going to do the welcome and the greeting time, and Brother Pat's going to do our sermon this morning. A uh, couple of announcements that we do have. Buddy wanted me to mention the rafting trip is this Saturday. There are still a few spots available if anybody wants to sign up for that. Uh, let's be in prayer for the youth that are up at Look Up Lodge. Um, I'm not sure exactly when they come home, but let's be in, in prayer for safe travels for them and that they have a good time up there. Uh, we do have the Committee on Committees and Nominating Committee. The list is out by the bulletins on the table. If you'll pick one up as you leave, we'll be voting on that next week. Um, other than that, I think that's all we have. Uh, at this time, we will go to Jeff's second favorite part of the service, which is the greeting time. So this time, let's please stand and greet. one other thing, the committee and teachers listing for the upcoming years available by the bulletins. Uh, review these committees and we will vote next week. Uh, this is from the committee on committees and nominating committee. Uh, let's open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us. Uh, bless us and keep us safe. Be with Pastor Jeff as he has a little bit of sickness. Be with him, heal his body. Be with those who are sick and suffering. Bless them. Reach out and touch them and let them know that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Uh, be with us as uh, 
this morning and uh, let your thoughts be my thoughts and bless us to have a good morning and to learn something. In your name we pray. Amen.
indeed we have been blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for allowing us to gather today. Please keep your hand upon those who are in need of healing, both physically, physically and emotionally. Please, at this time of service, please allow these tithes and offerings to go to the furtherment of your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen.
Well, it's an honor to be up here. Uh, I'm not worthy to be up here, but I appreciate Pastor Jeff having confidence in me to ask me to come up here and do this. Um, I was talking to Ms. Martha. I always hug her neck, and I hugged her at prayer time. She said uh, Mr. Chapman had thought about leaving early. They had somewhere to go. And uh, Ms. Chapman told him, ain't no need to leave. He probably ain't going to say nothing but about 15 to 18 minutes. <laughs> She's probably right. But uh, anyway, um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about why I think I'm here today. Um, I think it's because of Jesus Christ, and I think it's because of two pastors, all right? And I'm going to tell you a story roundabout, in a roundabout way, to get to what I'm trying to convey to you, all right? So I'm glad my in-laws are back there, Buddy and Patsy Wanamaker. I couldn't ask for any better. Uh, not just saying that, but anyway, you're part of, part of my story this morning. Um, I grew up loving to fish, not as much as Wayne Bale, I don't believe, but I really loved it. And I stayed on the lake and the rivers a good bit, fishing, local ponds, whatever. So I loved the river and... Um, also the lake and that type thing. Well, I was a fisherman. Then I met my wife, Amy, and Buddy and Patsy and all their families into all these water sports. Uh, of course, uh, the son, my brother-in-law, Dre, he is a world-class skier. And Buddy actually, I bet he taught half of Saluda County that knows how to ski to ski. He was unreal. And Patsy was right there with him driving the boat or whatever. And uh, I, I think she also has skied on his shoulders before. Is that right? She said, yep. So, I mean, I was fisherman type and all this, but we enjoyed the lake. My wife, she was a good skier too now. All my children, Chris has got a scar from jumping skis and whatnot, but um, like being on the lake. And I was on the lake yesterday, and we were in a boat that Buddy has. It's a pontoon boat, and the name of it is Captain Half Tank. <laughs> but he he's... It, he is uh, good to us and lets us use his stuff. And although you don't really want to brag about that boat, it's about like its name, you know. It's nothing to really look at, but it's a way to get around. And uh, so <laughs> Captain Half Tank was taking us down the road. Sometimes you wonder whether it's going to crank. You get, sometimes it smokes a little bit, but. Hey, my, my wife likes to hear that gas burn. As long as it's burning and we moving, she's good. But uh, so we was headed down the lake yesterday evening, and it was 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock p.m. We were headed in, and if you know where big man Sheely's is, we entered the no-wake zone at big man Sheely's. So we had to owl down. Otherwise, Captain Half Tank was making so much racket, you can't hardly hear yourself. It's an old two-stroke motor. And uh, anyway, so when we owl down, I could hear better. And then the phone rang. <laughs> and I looked at the phone, and I Preacher Jeff. And... Uh, I don't have his name entered on my phone as Preacher Jeff. For some reason, I got Preach It Jeff. That's, that's kind of fitting. 
preach it to you because he loves to preach it. And anyway, I looked at, I looked at the phone and my mind started going. You know, when you, when you look at your phone and you see who's calling, you kind of wonder in advance what's going to take place. I thought it might have been a prayer chain. I thought it might be somebody we might be praying for, that type thing. But I'm going to stop right there a minute and go back to big man Sheely's. Uh, if, you, if you don't know me or my family, uh, I am a preacher's son. And my dad was a Methodist preacher, but he preached everywhere. Uh, and he preached at big man Sheely's for 13 years. Uh, they asked him to come in there and have service. And Dwayne, his son, would cut the beer signs off. Daddy get behind the bar, preach. They'd have over 100, they'd have people waiting out the door. Just get in and listen. Um, anyway, great ministry. People were saved. People were baptized right there on the boat ramp. Uh, so instead of maybe Big Man Sheely's, a place that sells minnows, crickets, beer, whatever, it's not that kind of place to me. It's kind of hallowed ground. And um, so, get back to the phone call. Man, I'm glad I remembered that. Get back to the phone call. What does Pastor Jeff want? Seven o'clock. Man, he sounded terrible. I said, what's your name, preacher? I, I call him Rev. That's another story. But uh, I said, what's your need, Rev? He said, well, I'm not feeling very good. And... Uh, Wonder if you'd help me out <laughs> preaching tomorrow. <laughs> and I I just kind of first wanted to make up excuse or whatever, but uh, you know, got to thinking about it. I said, why not? That's uh, that's a good opportunity. Um but anyway, so Pastor Jeff asked me if I could do this. I said yeah. Um, and so me and Jamie and Cousin Ben got Captain Half Tank trying to go as quick as we could to get back <laughs> to where I could have a little quiet time with God and kind of figure out what to say uh, today. And so I made it back and actually... Went home and looked over some stuff. I'm, I'm early to bed, too, so you can imagine. Seven o'clock, Captain Half Tank going pretty slow, trying to get back where we at, and then me getting back home. Took a little while, but we made it, and uh, I looked over some stuff, and one of the things uh, that I thought about... Um, was when you have a, a situation arise and you need help, you should go to you should go to God first um, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but going back to the story real quick, I left one thing out. I told you in the beginning, Jesus and two preachers. I believe is the reason I'm up here today. Of course, I am a Christian. I'm saved. Therefore, I believe Jesus Christ has a lot to do with me being up here. Of course, Pastor Jeff calling me. That's one preacher. And the other preacher was my father. And it, I don't think it was a coincidence that when we slowed down, 
We were in front of big man Sheely's when I got that call. I said, Daddy, he messing with me. <laughs> he always wanted me to be a preacher. And uh, I said, I, ain't, I didn't have to call him yet, but uh, who knows. Anyway, um, what a coincidence. Uh, earlier this week, um, earlier this week, I, I was supposed to be doing something in church anyway because Brandon's gone. Brandon's on a trip with the youth. Um, and he asked me to do his youth class. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And I got to talking to my daughter, Chris, back there in the back. I said, Chris, you, you're more their age. You, you probably could do a good job. I know you can. And she said, yeah, I'll do it. So... I'm not sure how many times this has happened that um, a father and daughter has took the place of two pastors on the same day. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to thank her for doing that for me. But, so, I had to come up with a plan of action quick. Um, but when you, like I say, when you find yourself in a predicament, you can't just rely on yourself. You need to uh, ask God to help you. Um, I can remember over here on Main Street where my mother and father lived back in 2013 when my dad was at his sickest before he passed. I used to go by his bed and read him some scripture or devotion every evening. And I would get there and sit down by his bed, pick out something, start reading. He'd say, ho, ho, ho. I say, what's wrong? He said, before you read, we need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit for understanding and to give us what this Scripture we read means. And uh, so I want to do that right quick. Dear Lord, thank you for all you do for us. and uh, Thank you for these people that are here. and Help us to understand your word and, and take something that we can take out in the world and bless you. In your name we pray. Amen. So, I thought about a, a, a scripture and in my dad's house, they got just lots of scripture and different religious things on the wall. One of the scriptures is, and if you want to turn to it, uh, Jeremiah 33.3. I'll give you a minute to look that up if you want. I think I give it, yeah, I gave it to Billy. So... Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. All right, so that makes, that makes sense. Jeremiah 33, 3, right? We don't know everything. God knows it. Let's ask him for help. He can tell us some things we don't know. He is the creator. He is God. Rely on him. I heard a, a quote one time that kind of stuck with me. It stuck with me so much that I wrote it in my Bible. And it says, uh, Jesus should be your first response, not your last resort. So when we're going through trouble and we need help, don't make Jesus your last resort. Rely on him from the beginning, and you'll probably have a smoother path. Um, but 
pray, Pastor Jeff said, what you going to preach on today? I said, I don't know about preaching. I'm going to talk a little bit and use some scripture. But uh, he's watching today. So I said, you'll, you'll figure it out when I uh, start talking. And it's prayer. Something we can all do. Every one of us can pray. Um, what is prayer? What is prayer? Talking to, to God through Jesus Christ and listening. Sometimes we ain't got our ears open to listen back. But uh, praying, talking, talking to God. Uh, when, when do you pray? When do you pray? Um, first of all, in order to communicate with God through Jesus, we need to be right with God. Okay? The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all sinners. There was only one perfect man, and that was Jesus Christ. 100% man, 100% God. All the rest of us, we're not perfect. So we all sin. And, be and before we get into communication with God, we really need to get our hearts right and ask forgiveness of our sins. And if you ask for forgiveness of sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and all unrighteousness. So um, our next set of scriptures, James 5, 16. James 5, 16. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So to, how do you get righteous? You got to ask for forgiveness of your sins and you got to do something about it. You got to the clean house. You got to ask God for forgiveness. Uh, so the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So what about if you aren't righteous? What if you aren't living right? What if you aren't confessing your sins and asking forgiveness? That's a little communication barrier there, I believe. Um, so get right with God. Um, my dad, of course, I've mentioned him several times, but he was a big influence on me. He would say, you need to be in tune with God. When you're talking to God, you need to be in tune with God. Have you ever, some of y'all aren't um, old enough to remember AM, FM radios or even don't want to know about them. Uh, but in order to tune in your radio, you got to turn the knob and get that right frequency or you're going to have a bunch of static. Same way with the old TVs. UHF, VHF, you had all these rabbit ears or a rotary antenna that you'd turn the thing and the antenna turn around until you got that right frequency. When you got that right frequency, you were in tune. You could communicate. You could hear communication and see communication. Same way with being in tune with God. Same way being in tune with God. How do we get in tune with God? Well, confess your sins. Ask for forgiveness. Live better. Um, getting righteous. Getting right with God. That's what we want to do. Also, you get in tune with God by going to church, 
getting around other Christian people, sharing uh, fellowship, growing in the Word of God, which goes along with reading your Bible, uh, praying, praising God. All these things are what you do to get in tune with God. When I thought about praising God, I thought about Rebecca. Rebecca, sometime, I know at least once or twice, I've come in kind of humming a song from the Christian radio, uh, and she'll, she, she listens to it all the time, I know, and she'll say, oh, that's a good song or whatever. And, I mean, if you don't really know how to praise God, Turn on some good Christian music and let it get into your heart. But all these things we need to be doing to get in tune with God to make our prayer lives better. The more we in tune with God, the more the communication is good. Uh, so, uh, when... When we're in tune with God, there are different ways. There are different ways to pray. I pray uh, constantly. Uh, if I'm riding down the road, I might be praying. If sometimes you're laying in the bed at night, wondering about your children or wondering about some problem, that's why I don't get good sleep a lot, but. Uh, you find yourself waking up praying. Last night, I knew I was going to be up here. <laughs> so I was praying a lot, okay? I just wake up praying, talking to God uh, through Jesus Christ. Um, if you turn in your Bibles, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 through 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 through 18. This says, pray without ceasing. Pray constantly. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He is concerned about every one of you. Uh, be in constant prayer. Don't stop uh, praying. Uh, just remember, God's time, God's time might not be your time, but God's time is perfect timing. So keep praying. Um, I was, you know, like I said, brought up as a preacher's son, and uh, we all sat around the table when we got ready to eat. We'd had the prayer. It was my turn uh, to pray, or Mama or Daddy told me to pray. I uh, had the blessing one night, and uh, I, that's when I was doing the God is great, God is good. Let us thank him for the food. Uh, and right before I started to pray, uh, it's, the telephone rang, and I went to get the phone, and I started that prayer. God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. But anyway, it was instilled in us to pray before every meal and pray, and uh, which leads us to Let's go to Luke 11, 1 through 4. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Luke 11, 1 through 4. I'm reading all this King James Version in honor of Mr. Chapman. <laughs> I thought I'd get it. Hey, when he says amen, you know you're saying something right. And it came to pass 
that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Um, so, even if you have a hard time praying, Jesus taught some of his disciples how to pray. And you can go to that verse and look at it and study it and begin your prayers with that. Um, and there's also sometimes when we pray, you know, earlier I said pray without ceasing. You know, I was talking about praying in your car or praying wherever, just talking to God. Sometimes you don't want any outside distractions. You just want to get intimate with God. And um, when, we, when we don't, want these outside interruption, you might want to uh, take this verse of scripture, Matthew chapter 6, 5 and 6. Matthew 6, 5 and 6. And it says, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love, they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So, a lot of times when you, when you really want to get intimate with God, it might be that uh, special place that you go. It's not necessarily a closet, although I have heard people doing that going into an actual closet, but it might be just a, a, a place that you go uh, where you can be quiet with God. Um, I wrote down a, a story that I witnessed, and I put it in my Bible. And my father was talking to my uh, nephew, Josh Griffith, who was going to Afghanistan. He was in the middle, he was in the National Guard and he had to go out to Afghanistan and he was, you know, worried about it. This was in July 2010. Uh, but Daddy told him about how he was in the war in Korea in 1952. He was a member of the Air Sea Rescue uh, Team where he saw a lot of terrible, terrible things, and he pulled people out of crash landings and uh, bad accidents and dead and alive. He, he talked about how this was so stressful, and he, he talked about one time when he was on a plane and the engine caught on fire. And the pilot told him they were going down. He was terrified for his life. And his life was flashing before his eyes. But they did escape the crash. Close to that same time, he and three other soldiers that were on that plane turned their life over to God. And all three became preachers. And Daddy 
told Josh during those times of high stress and war, he found a place by tree where he would visit, um, where he would visit God and read his Bible. This was the special place of worship. So he urged Josh to do the same thing and find a special place in Afghanistan to worship God. So we might all need to find that special place uh, where we can go and have uh, time with God. Um, so really, I'm, I'm hitting pretty good on time because I would say in closing, somebody said amen. And it wasn't Mr. Chow. Um, <laughs> Y'all done got off. <laughs> so, what we need, when my daddy said in closing, that would mean 45 more minutes. <laughs> but maybe even you too, Preacher Jeff. But, um, so we need to get, get right with God and get in tune with him. Worship, pray, praise God, pray without ceasing, pray like Jesus taught his disciples to pray. We all have problems. We need to pray for one another. Everybody's got problems. I, I, I like to say everybody's got problems. And if somebody says they don't have a problem, the problem's lying. But find a special place to meet with Jesus and pray. Uh, cut out the distractions of the world. And a final thought, uh, talking about somebody in tune with God, Alan Metz is, he's really in tune with God now. He, he sent me a little something this morning, a little video to watch, but... Uh, what it said, I'm going to give you this to carry home with you. We also need to praise God for what he's done for us, and we need to thank him for what he's done and doing for us. So this was uh, a message that this guy said. He said, what if you woke up this morning and the only thing you had left is what you thanked God for yesterday? So don't just pray and ask for, for things. Be thankful and show praise to God for these things that you have. That's all I have.